Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shoma. Thank you all to everyone who jumped on live with me this evening um, after the disappointing loss of the Indiana Fever to the Minnesota Lynx. Obviously not the type of uh, Friday night you wanted to spend watching Indiana blow a 10-point lead late in the first half. Really, I mean, they were up 10 with, I think, a minute to go in the first half and then gave up a little five-point run right before the break. You know, 10 with 47 seconds left. And uh, give up, you know, that uh, five points right before the break, and then they get – it ends up being a 14-0 run crossing over the half. But before we jump in, thank you guys again for jumping on with me tonight and for your continued support of our channel. Greatly appreciate it. Win or lose, happy to have you guys on. You know, Hopefully Saturday, Sunday, when I do jump on here, we will be talking about an Indiana win and another great performance by the Fever. And they get it back on track, as I expect that they will. Sometimes you need losses like this to open your eyes a little bit. But at the same time, there, there were so many mistakes tonight that were just ridiculous, just unacceptable bullshit. Overall, I mean, you, you, you're talking about the fact that you blow a 10-point lead on your home court. You, they blew multiple So they were up 11 in the first, in the first quarter, I believe it was, if I recall correctly. And then um, <clears throat> up 11, and that lead disintegrated in a blink of an eye. Then they're up 10, that lead disintegrates. And in the third quarter, that was probably the worst quarter the Indiana Fever have played in the last two months. So it's definitely before the break. And um, disappointing way to lose that game. But what I can take away from that game is that there was a reversion of Christy Sides to what she did the first two months of the season. It's not all her fault, but she needs to own a lot of this shit. The decisions that she made tonight or failed to make tonight are in large part why Indiana lost this game. Yes, players play, coaches coach. But when the players aren't playing well and things are going the wrong direction, it is the responsibility of the head coach to fix it, to stop, the, to stem, stem the tide from drowning your team. This game was 52 to 50 with seven minutes plus to go in the third quarter. And she did not call a timeout the remainder of the third quarter. She allowed the Lynx to kick the Fever's ass the rest of that quarter. We're talking about 52-50 turned into 74-62 at the end of the third. It's unacceptable. It's flat out unacceptable. And that cannot happen. You have the ability to stop the game, stop the run. It's 65-60 when Caitlin Clark hits a three at 308. At that point, it was 65-57, actually, when she hit that three to make it 65-60. I would have called the timeout, actually, at 63-57 because the way the game was going, hell, at 65-57, I definitely would have called the timeout because the game was going in the wrong direction. Indiana was scuffling on offense. They weren't doing well. Nalissa Smith was having a doozy of a day in missing point-blank shots, flailing her body all over the place. Bunny after bunny after bunny. It, it, it was absolutely exhausting. Watching her fall on herself, blow opportunities, blow layups over and over and over again. This was one of those games – as I said tonight on live, Melissa Smith cannot play it because she's so bad defensively that if she can't score points, she is a massive detriment to the team. Now, let me see what her, her minus was because it was a she was a minus five. It felt like a lot more. Caitlin Clark was a minus seven. Hull was a minus eight. Mitchell, minus six. Alinda Boston, a minus 13. She was she finished with 20 and five, but she was other, otherwise atrocious for a lot, large part of that game. She was nine to 15. But again, another player missing point blank shots. 
has no left hand. Between Melissa Smith and Leah Boston, they got to get in the gym and learn to make a left-handed layup. You cannot always go back to your right. So when you turn and your back is to the basket and you turn, so if I'm to the basket and this is my right hand, and I'm turning this direction, so I'm turning to the right, I have got to be able to use my left hand to finish. I have to. Aaliyah Boston is incapable of doing that. Melissa Smith, incapable of doing that. They will constantly bring the ball back to their right hand. So when you turn to the left, turn to the right, and go back to your right hand, what have you done? You have made the shot blockable by your defensive player because you put the ball right in their face. If you go with your left, what's the worst thing that will happen is that they block your shot out of bounds. That's the worst. The more likely occur thing that will occur is that you will get fouled. And you will go to the free throw line because they're going to hit your arm. Or they're going to have to go through you to get to the ball, and they're going to hit this arm. So learn to use your goddamn left. You're a professional. You're six foot five. I get it. You can't jump two inches off the ground. But you can't keep missing point blank fucking layups from the left side because you don't know how to use your left hand, left hand, your left. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Aaliyah Boston, Melissa Smith were otherwise bad. Kelsey Mitchell had an uneven game. Caitlin Clark played well in spurts, didn't play well in spurts, too many turnovers. Few of them teammates drop passes. We went back, we went back there today as well. Drop passes for turnovers. But at 78-77, and Caitlin Clark screech, screaming down the sideline. This just cannot happen. Take a look at this play. 78-77, 528 to go. Look at the positioning here. This was an absolutely outstanding defensive play by Caitlin Clark. Outstanding, right? Look where she is. She's guarding on the left side of the of, of the key. Ball, I'm sorry, from facing that direction. She's guarding the left side of the key. Ball's on the right wing at the three-point line. You're running a pick. You're running a little give to, to Courtney Williams. A little pick and roll. Boom. Look at this. Look at that help defense. That help defense is absolutely outstanding. When people say that Caitlin Clark is a bad defensive player, she's a bad, she's not a good on the ball defensive player. But off the ball and seeing things, she sees the floor better than anyone in the league. Like even defensively, she sees things that other people just do not see. And she sees it in a way where she not the woman shooting this ball is taller than her. I can't tell who sh who shot the ball. She blocked this shot here with two hands. Look at this. Two-handed block shot, rebound, push. All right. I will tell you this. I knew exactly what she was going to do when she, when this, when, at this point. I knew, I knew she was going to pass that ball to Fag Benley. But you can see right here, it's a two-on-three break. Kelsey Mitchell is back there trailing on the left towards the middle of the court. You can see she's probably going to run around to the, to the, to the three-point line. But if you look at the, the 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 defender that's closest to Clark, she sags a little bit. Clark right here, real shit, needs to go all the way to the basket and attack. She will get fouled or she will make a layup and get an and one. And the place would absolutely erupt. But she makes this decision right here that just, I know she's uh, she's always looking for her teammates. Also know who you're passing the ball to. Finley cannot catch the ball when you put it at her chest. So this is a bounce, a, an attempted wraparound bounce pass. I, I mean, we've seen her make crazy ones, but this thing would have had to have the most ridiculous backspin on it to get there. So here we go. Like, this this isn't a, you go to the basket. That woman that's closest to her is going to foul her. She's going to foul her if she go if, if, because Kayla Carl will go up with the right hand. She will get fouled. Worst case, the shot gets blocked out of bounds. There's no foul. It's Indiana ball. Instead, you get this. Like, this is a horrendous pass. Horrendous. Number one, Fagbenli was 
too far behind the play. That's not one. If she's two steps further up, then you can actually lead her with that ball. But because she's behind, it's almost like you're trying to spin the ball back. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's get back to that right there. Uh, right here. Boom, boom. I'm sorry. See it again. Where did, where did the video go? All right. That, the video, I don't know what the hell happened there. I recorded the whole thing. Let me pull it back up for you guys because that just was... It was a horrible. It, it was it was as bad. It was as probably the worst decision I've seen Caitlin Clark make ever. I mean, real talk. It was probably the worst decision I've seen her make ever. And you know, I don't do. I don't. I, I'm not an overreactive person in terms of well, it cost them the game type shit. Because no, they did a lot of things that cost them the game. This was not what cost them the game. But when when you when you when you when you see what happens. I will put this up for you in a second. Just such a bad decision. And then it's, uh, sorry, I'm a little delayed here. This was a sequence that was just so awful and she knew it. You can see her reaction. She knew it. <clears throat> Let's load this back up so you can see this in full. I apologize for the delay here. I know y'all understand what I'm trying to do for y'all and get y'all the proper perspective of this. But let's look at this play right here. Boom. What in like this was impossible. And because she was more focused on passing the ball than she was in scoring, that's why this happened. Because she ends up being behind the play. Where in fact, if you if you want to you you want to take another look at it. She could have pulled up from 15 feet and taken a jump shot. Heck, I would have been more comfortable with her taking a freaking pull-up three, realistically, over this pass. But this pass right here gets stolen in the middle. I think it's Heidman who stole it. But worse off, now you have a reach. It's going back the other direction. You've got Courtney Williams on the on the right side up there. It looks, I think that's her. Yeah, that's Courtney Williams. Yeah, that's Courtney Williams. You have a three-on-two break the other direction. Leah Boston who's stuck in mud. And that is Lexi Hall. No, that's Katie Lou Samuelson, who, who can't guard a parked car and doesn't understand that, doesn't understand most basic defensive, I mean, premise, you know, premise of defense and the things that she's doing defense. Caitlin Clark's running back. Kelsey Mitchell's running back. All right. Number one, that was an awful pickup of the ball by Samuelson. She didn't even make a decision one way or the other. Aaliyah Boston is looking at the shooter. She doesn't see the people behind her. Caitlin Clark is trailing. And you see Courtney Williams here catch the ball on the wing. Good contest. Caitlin Clark has to get this rebound. She has to get this rebound. Like, you're staring at that ball. You have to see that ball. That You've got to get that rebound. Kelsey Mitchell kind of quit on the playback here. She's jogging now. She's walking back. She's jogging. Look at it. Look at it. Look. What are you doing, Kelsey Mitchell? What are you doing? What are you? Caitlin went way too far in. I don't know what she was doing on that one, but she went way too far in, took herself out of position. Katie Lou challenged the shot. She's out of position. She didn't box out after challenging the shot. So let's look at it again. She doesn't box out after challenging the shot. Challenge box. Like you don't, you can't run by her. You have to box her ass out. You're six four. She's five eight. Box her out. Don't challenge so hard that you're flying by her. Let's see. She grabs her own rebound, kicks it back out, right back. Boom three. There's your ball game. I mean, I don't want to say that's your ball game, but that was your ball game. That that momentum swing right there. And Aaliyah Boston, that, that contest was fucking atrocious. That contest by Aaliyah Boston was absolutely atrocious. Go back and look at this again. What do you... She takes two hard steps, and then she takes two soft steps. 
it looks like she's going to really contest. And then it's like, oh, well, I don't know. And you're six foot five. If you hard contest her, she won't even get the shot off. She will pump fake, pull it back down. She might drive, but now you've changed the shot. You've changed the play. Instead, you're soft in your response. You're soft in your response. Oh, jog, shot, bucket. Caitlin Clark's knee hands on her knees. She's like, fuck, I blew this goddamn game. Look, she didn't blow the game on that play. She played 25, 8, and 8. I mean, she was the reason they were in the game. But, again, you're talking about a situation in which that pass was a very bad decision. Very bad decision. And then you're looking at a situation here where they do get it back and they make it 81-80. Kelsey hits a three. Kelsey Mitchell hits a three to make it 81-80. And you say, okay, there's a shot. But what happens? Katie Lou Sanderson loses her loses her 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 player. She loses the player that she's guarding. And that woman knocks down back-to-back threes and basically ices the game. Minnesota hit five threes in the final five minutes of the game because Indiana's defense was fucking terrible. It was fucking terrible. you got to defend better. You can't leave shooters like that. You can't. This is what Minnesota does. This is preparation for a game. the next one this is the next possession kelsey mitchell's just nailed the three from the wing this is the defensive disaster again tyrese halliburton celebrating and supporting that team here's a nice kick out from melissa smith to kelsey mitchell nice shot good contest you can't let her shoot that ball if you're in minnesota But look, we got to drive. Okay, we have a – I don't know what's going on. They're they're just – they're creating a mess right here. Caitlin's got number two, um, I think. Yeah, that's Kali, right? I believe that's on – that's right there. What is Aaliyah Boston doing? What's Aaliyah Boston doing? Either you crack – you come forward or you back up. You got to pick one. You can't. You're, she's in Nowheresville, right? So look what happens. Caitlin's in Nowheresville as well. She gets caught, and now she's chasing. But you see where she's going. Look at the top side where Katie Lou Samuelson is. Her 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 assignment's that corner three. It's one of their best shooters. What the fuck are you playing off one of the best shooters? Look who's to- on the top. The top wing is... Who the hell was up the top wing? That's um, that is that Heinz Allen. That's Heinz Allen. Let me tell you about. Let me tell you who Heinz Allen is. Heinz Allen this year, stats wise. Let's take a look. Uh, stats. While she is a thirty five percent, thirty six percent three point shooter, she's taking thirty nine threes all year. She's fourteen of thirty nine. You know what? I'm gonna take my chances, and I'm gonna dare. Heinz Allen to hit that wing shot. I'm going to dare number two, who I believe is uh, Heidman. Uh, let me confirm. Uh, I'm going to dare Natasha Heidman to make that pass to the wing. Samuelson cannot leave the goddamn shooter. It's basic. This is basic. That is the easiest pass to make driving to the baseline. She's wide the fuck open. So instead of having Nalissa Smith drop down to help and Katie Lou get more out towards the shooter or Nalissa Smith drop down towards the paint and make that guard make a decision, what happens here? Drive. Collier's there. You're jumping. What is Katie Lou Samuelson thinking is going to happen? Here's what's going to happen. Here's one of two things. Heidman's going to make a great, amazing pass, pocket pass, bounce pass, 
to, to Collier for a short eight footer that she'll make because she's she's going to make that. She's a great player. Or she's going to kick it to the corner. The pocket pass is a tougher pass. It's one that can be blown. She's going to kick it to the corner. Melissa Smith, instead of dropping down all the way into the paint and getting Collier, is caught in Nowheresville, too. Lord, here we go again. So let's see the whole thing here. Oh, look at this. Triple team Heidman. You got Heidman being triple teamed. What is Heidman going to do? What exactly was Heidman going to fucking do behind the backboard? Nothing. She's stuck. Now, uh, Aaliyah Boston could have taken care of that. Samuelson, awful. Awful, awful. You may disagree with me. You might say I'm totally wrong. No way. That is bad defense. It was bad from the beginning. But the help defense was awful. Now, Alyssa Smith should be in the paint on the on the right at the at the, the restricted area. So she's in front of Collier. I'm gonna I'm gonna live with 22 hitting hitting something who ran in from the three, so she's not even at the three-point line anymore. I'm gonna live with that. Look who ended up contesting it. Smith got out to give a good, a decent contest, but that's money, man. That's that's that was an open shot for her. And Samuelson does absolutely nothing, standing there like they had a chicken with a head cut off. Ridiculous. Bucket. Game is eighty four eighty. All right. I'm going to the next. So here we go. Next play. This is the play that pretty much was the knockout blow, in my opinion. It really made the game. It, it put the game out of reach. I mean, it's still three minutes to go, but the momentum completely shifted. There was one more after, but and I'll show that as well. But it was, again, there was another. These were defensive lapses. So you got the ball inbound to Courtney Williams. She's bringing it across the left side. It's a pick and like a look like a what do you call it? A screen? Not really a screen, but a give and go type of thing. She's one on one with Kelsey Mitchell. Watch where, <laughs> and look who she's guarding. Look who look who was guarding six. That's the one who drops it in her face again. That's Katie Lou Samuelson. Why is Katie Lou Samuelson still in this game at three minutes to go? Sat Lexi Hall with five mm -hmm. and change. More than five minutes to win the game. It's a four point game here. The last two possessions. These last two possessions, where this where number six knocks down back to back threes. Cost was the ball game. I don't know if the shot. The shot gets off if you have. Uh, I don't know if you if this shot even gets off by Bridget Carlton, if you have uh, Lexi Hall in the game. But let's take a look. Okay, we got Nalissa Smith in the pick and roll coverage. Again, Nalissa Smith. Why is she in the game? Why is in fact Benley in the game? Like th this was defense. They got back into this game with defense, and you know what Christy Sides did. She sat her two best defensive players in the final five minutes of this fucking game. I, 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 I'm, I'm lost. I'm lost. She sat her two best defensive players final five minutes of this game. She sat Lexi at 552 in a three-point game. She picked her fifth foul. I wouldn't even sat her, but you did. The game is a one-point game. When did Fag Benley get sat, put in the bench? Melissa Smith comes in for Fag Benley at 425 with an 8177 game. They make it 8180. But again, you sat your two best play, two best defensive players when you need defense to win. You didn't need off. Yes, you need a score, but you don't need offense to win here. You need defensive plays, which means you need stops. And you need easy buckets. How do you get easy buckets? Off misses. How do you get easy buckets off misses? You got Caitlin Clark on that floor. What does Caitlin Clark do better than anybody else? She sets up layups. What does she do better than anybody else? When you run the floor, you get layups. That's what happens with Caitlin Clark. We know this by now. So the fact that you have taken out your two best defensive players and they're sitting still with 3 4 to go in the game, Absolutely preposterous. So let's take a look. 
this is atrocious. <laughs> what the fuck is Melissa Smith doing? I mean, both of them, Kelsey Mitchell and Smith. Either you switch or you fucking blitz her ass. Do people not watch how Caitlin Clark gets blitzed by defensive by teams? You blitz her hard and you make that pass impossible or you switch. But both of them are a never, never land. And look where Katie Lou Samuelson is. She's dropping down from the best shooter on the goddamn team or one of the best shooters on the damn team. And you get that. I, 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 I. Bridget Carlton from three. What is her three point? Bridget Carlton shoots 43% from three. Alana Smith shoots 43% from three. Kayla McBride with a terrible game today shots, shoots 41%. Cecilia Zandal Zandalassini shoots 46% from three. You think Minnesota wins so many fucking games? It's Nafisa Collier inside and these gunners on the perimeter who are getting wide open looks because of driving kick from Courtney Williams, from Natasha Heidman. That's what you're getting. Wide open looks. You dropped off a 43% three-point shooter to go cover an elbow two. Mind you, I get it. That's another shooter right there. But the dagger is a three. And Aaliyah Boston is behind you and should probably get her ass over. Caitlin Clark could come out. I mean, Caitlin Clark, you don't want to really leave there because she has, um, I think it's Heidman on the opposite side. And Heidman is, uh, no, she can't shoot. So, yeah, maybe Clark, maybe Clark is coming over. But Samuelson cannot leave this shooter. And the botch, the botch happens right here with Kelsey Mitchell and Melissa Smith, Melissa Smith who can't guard anybody. So let's take a look right here what happens. She went, kick out, wide open. Yeah, swoop. There's your ball game. That's it. Let me find that last play. Might as well. Might as well find you the last play. So let's jump. Let's jump back in here. This is the final shot I'm going to show. This is. It made it 87 82 after Leah Boston gets a 14 footer from Caitlin Clark. This is probably the worst of the defensive plays. The worst of the three. Like, think about it. This could be the worst of the three, how bad they defended this one. Put, they're still, here's the thing Minnesota's still pushing the ball. They're not slowing down. They're a tempo team, too. They're not slowing down at all. They know how they get buckets, they get buckets by pushing the ball. You got Heidman here, runs off pick and roll. I think that's Alana Smith. I think that's Alana Smith. You, you got her coming off pick and roll. Caitlin Clark's now behind. You know, Aaliyah Boston here has Nafisa Collier. Look at where Nalissa, look at where Nalissa Smith is playing. She's playing a, an elite three-point shooter. Literally, ten, she's 10 feet off of an elite three-point shooter. You got uh Katie Lou Samuelson up there on a Carlton still, oh, God, and uh, Kelsey's on Courtney Williams here. There, okay. Katie Lou looks like she's in the middle of nowhere once again. She's playing darn near in the paint. Alyssa, Aaliyah Boston is in never in the middle again once again. She's too slow footed, and Caitlin Clark's late. Look at how open Alana Smith is. Look at how, look at how, oh, I, I mean, why is Melissa Smith rolling with Nafisa Collier? What are you doing? What are you doing? Aaliyah Boston is literally right in front of her. There's no way that pass is going to get to her. Look at this. Look at this. This is ridiculous. Melissa Smith does not know the basic concepts of playing of, of, of help defense. She missed that at ba in, in basketball camp. <laughs> she doesn't know how to mo the most basic help defense. Her player, her her, how was Aaliyah Boston going to get over there? How? Katie Lou, of course, 
is now leaving Carlson in the corner. So what do you think is going to happen? You take a wild ass. You saw it already, so we know. Katie Lou Samuelson, the player she's guarding, is going to get the offensive board off of this wide open miss from Alana Smith. Boom, off the back iron. Where is Katie Lou? Where is Aaliyah Both They're both, they're both contesting. That just shows just such inept defensive defensive attention that they're both going out to contest that shot. And neither of them really contested it. Oh, she just missed. And look at Carlton grabs the rebound because Melissa Smith can't box anybody out. And I don't know. She doesn't even put a body on people half time. Here, Carlton, you see Courtney Williams. Kelsey Mitchell's chasing that Carlton. What is Aaliyah Boston doing again? She's just standing there. What is Aaliyah Boston doing? She's standing there now. Where is Katie Lou Samuelson? Is she like a half court? Oh, no, she's with Heidman. Okay, where is Aaliyah Boston's guarding who? The red in the paint? She's guarding. I, I, I got it. I got it. No, Aaliyah Boston's guarding the WNBA sign. She's guarding nobody. She's guarding nobody. Boom. There's your ball game. Game's over right there. All right. That was it. I got to put this together on the fly, pulling up the video. I'm hoping it doesn't get copyright because it's too much uh, footage. That's why I stop it a lot. But that's just shit. That, that's just absolute shit defense. So while people may want to sit here and blame Caitlin Clark for throwing it, making a terrible pass. That was a turnover. That defense by Katie Lou Sanderson, Melissa Smith, and Aaliyah Boston. Hell, everyone on that team. Everyone on the team. But in the in, in the in the situations that you had, that defense was so fucking bad it was embarrassing. That defense was so fucking bad it was embarrassing. And that's why they lost. They lost because defensively they were not solid. They, were, they weren't even close to solid. They were awful. That final five, they gave up five threes. Five. So a game that they had chopped a 14-point lead down to one, they got outscored in the final five minutes by 10. And you have a loss. And Christy Sides has her two best defensive players still sitting on the bench with 223 left, now down eight. She put them both back in at 146. It was 92 to 85. Game was over. Game was over. In fact, Minnesota scored seven, seven more points. Game was over. So, yeah, a, a, an utter failure tonight, especially in that final five. Um, coaching disaster in the third quarter by Christy Sides. They looked, fan, they looked really good in the first half. And that's the sad part. They were up by 10. 50 to 40 with under a minute left to go in the first half. They looked really good. And then that third quarter, again, was the worst quarter that they have played in two months. But they get back on it on Sunday, and let's see if they can turn this thing back around and beat the Atlanta Dream. They should. They're a better team than the Dream. They're playing at home. They should have plenty of fucking energy because they should be pissed off. They should be watching some film and, and, and getting their shit right to go out and win that game and bump their record up to 19 and 17. That's all I got for tonight. I thank you guys for jumping on again, live with me again. If you haven't already done so, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. And also, you know, ring that bell, share this video. Appreciate you. Love you. Come on now.